In this video, we're going to talk about how we can combine observables in different ways. We already saw how we can concatenate them. We saw how we can merge them. But there's a couple other interesting things we can do with them that I think is really important to at least be aware of because they can come in handy quite frequently. Now, the first one is called zip, and this is the standard zip operation you'll see in many, many things uh, like Lodash or Link or whatever. But for you guys who might not be familiar with the operation, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to implement zip in terms of arrays so you guys kind of see where I'm going with this. So we'll do function array zip, and it'll take in array1, array2, and uh, selector. So array1 is an array, array2 is an array, obviously. Uh, selector is a function that's going to uh, merge array1 and array2. Array so I'm going to say const count equals math min array1 length, array2 length. This will get the smallest size of the smallest array. Then I'm going to say const results equals um, uh, empty array. Then I'm going to say for let i equals 0, i smaller than array, or i smaller than count, i plus plus. And then I'm going to say const combined equals selector array1 at i, array2 at i. And then I'm going to say results push combined return results. Straightforward. So let's say we have a, um, well, let's say we have array1, and array1 contains some values. And let's say we have an array 2 that contains values we want to multiply with array 1. So maybe we'll do identity here, maybe we'll do a 0 there, um, a 10 there, a 4 there, and a 1 there. And we can just keep on going on and on and on because the arrays don't have to be the same size. Then we can say const results equals array zip, array 1, and array 2, and console log results. So let's go ahead and run this example. And we're going to see an error, and that's because selector is not a function, because I'd never passed in a function to this. I hope you, <laughs> you guys probably caught that. Um, again, remember, the selector function receives a value from the left array and a value from the right array, and its result is supposed to be put into the combined array. So now we get the result of multiplying these two arrays together. So it's really that simple. That's it. So how do we use it in RxJS? Well... A couple th important things to notice about how RxJS works with zip. It ha you, you have to have the first item produce an, uh, a value and the second item produce a value before the zip operation is called. So we can see that with an example. I could say rxobservable.range, let's do a 110. And I can say dot zip rxobservable interval 500, and then I pass in the selector function, which takes in a left and a right, just like we did before. And um, I'll say uh, I'll say this is let's say um, item is left, and then um, at for the time is going to be right times 500. Remember the interval returns an index for how many times it's ran. So to get the amount of milliseconds that it's ran for, we simply uh, uh, multiply the right by 500. So again, the left is the source. Um, observable. The right is the observable we passed in as the first parameter. And then I can simply subscribe. I can subscribe to create subscriber and say zip. And go ahead and run this. Zip next, uh, 1 at 0, 2 at 500, and so on and so on. And at 10, notice it completes. It completes because the source observable completed. But if the other observable also completed, it, the entire uh, sequence would terminate as well. That's zip. It's very straightforward. If you need to zip up two observables, that's how you do it. But there's two other ways we can work with combining observables. And that is combine, um, or sorry, with latest from and combine latest. So let's look at combine um, or with latest from first. So Rx observable, uh, we'll do a um, interval of one second. And then I'm going to say with latest from Rx observable interval 500. And then I'm going to say subscribe, uh, create subscription, um, create subscriber with latest from. And so look at the behavior here. Notice that with latest from only emits an item when the source emits an item. And then it emits a new item, um, 
uh, with the last item that was emitted by the destination. So there's also combined latest. Combined latest is very similar, but combined latest will emit a value if either of those emit a value. So let's go ahead and uh, um, take five and compare those two sequences. So for the first sequence, oh, come on, stop that madness. For the first sequence, we only emitted a value when the source observer emitted a value, and then we grabbed the latest. So you can notice how each one of these, uh, of the second items, is um, two items ahead of it. That's because this is uh, an interval at 500 milliseconds, whereas this is an interval at a second. But when we do the combined latest, it emits a value whether, um, do, no matter which observer emits a value. So any value that changes, it will emit a value. One other thing about combined latest and with latest from is you can pass in a selector function just like zip. So I can say left, right, and um, I don't know, I can do left times right, why not? And now I get left times right. So we start at zero, then we go to three, four, 10, and blah, blah, blah. So you can pass in a selector. Again, the selector works just like zip. But that's combined latest and with latest from. So um, where would you use this? Well, there's actually a lot of scenarios where you would use this, but one, one use case, um, specifically with the um, uh, with the with latest from, not the combined latest, or possibly in either scenario. Let's say we have a behavior subject that's a user. So current user equals new rx behave your subject, and the new user is is logged in false. So then I would say. Um, so I would say like something like rx observable, and we'll do an interval of 100 and we can pretend that this is an event that we're like we're clicking a button like delete this current item and then i can say with latest from current user and then i can say filter and remember it's going to return an array with the the interval on the left hand side and the user on the right hand side so i can say i user filter whoops i have to uh, put that in parentheses because i'm doing a deconstruction um i user goes into user is logged in and then subscribe create subscriber um, with latest from so you'll notice that this is gonna, not going to produce anything it's not going to ever finish because our interval is running on forever and we never complete but it's not going to do anything because we're doing with latest from current user but the current user has never logged in so if we went ahead and said uh, whoops I almost did at that time I caught myself uh, set timeout at, um, let's say, three seconds. And I said current user dot next. And I said is logged in is true. Now we can wait three seconds. But once this current user does the next, then it'll start producing values because we're, we're saying with latest from current user. Now, what if we wanted this operation to happen um, when the user joins, but we wanted to um, produce the last value, the, the, we wanted to perform the last operation, then we would say combine latest. Because now, the second the user changes over, we will get that value, that new value. Whereas with, with latest from, we didn't. We had to wait for the operation to happen again, and then it combined in the user, and then it checked to see if the user is logged in. But the cool thing about that is we can pause these observables until a user gets logged in by combining it with current user. And that's a way to do authentication and authorization in reactive code. But anyway, those are some uh, powerful, uh, simple, but powerful ways we can combine multiple observables together. So we'll see you guys in the next video.